Okay, question eight. The alkynes are a homologous series of hydrocarbons. Simplest member is ethane, C2H2, used in welding torches. Ethane can be produced from methane using bond enthalpies and mean bond enthalpies from the data book. Calculate the enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole for this reaction. Okay, so I've pulled in the data from the data book because the data book is no longer your data book. Okay, right, so this is a straight up break and then make. And always remembering our little reaction pathway, you always have to go up before you come back down. So the break is all going to be end up total is positive. Make is going to be minus. Add them together, going to give us our answer. Okay, so breaking. First off, I'm going to break. Okay, six carbon to hydrogen bonds. Now, I know that you're going to make two. And if you totally see that, I'm fine with you just saying you just broke four. But I think it is easier if you just break it all down to component atoms and then build it back up again. Okay, so I need six of these. Okay. Um, and then I need to also break the carbon to hydrogen bond in here. And again, you know, in the exam, the paper is your paper. And so you could just go through and kind of tick off each bond you've broken so you know you've done everything. Okay. So... I'm going to do 6 times C to H. Oh, actually, let's... My C to C was where C to C is up here. Okay. So I've got 4... Sorry, 3, 4, 8. Um, and then 6 times 412, which I had scribbled down somewhere, at 2,472, which means my grand total of breaking is 2,820. Okay. Then my making... Okay, so making, well, I could argue that this is the same, so let's keep that the same colour, okay? So I'm doing two uh, carbon to hydrogens, which I've already got at 418, so two of them is 824. Okay, I have one carbon to carbon triple, different one than I had before, so there's my carbon to carbon triple, just one of them, so that's a straight 838. Sorry. And then I'm also got my hydrogens at the side there. So my hydrogens at the side. I've got two hydrogen bonds. And there's my hydrogen. So two times 436 is 872. Add all that up. And that means I've got minus 2,534. Add those two things together. Gives me my final answer at plus 286 kilojoules per mole. Okay. Right. Hess's law question. Uh, calculating the enthalpy change for reactions that do not normally take place, such as the formation of propyne from its elements. That's why Hess is useful. Okay. Calculate the enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole for this reaction using the following information. Okay. You have your data equation, you have your target equations, and then you just go to run Hess. Okay. So... Um, I'll do it both ways. Uh, let's start with algebraic. Okay, right, so delta H, this is my delta H question mark that I want to find out. Um, I've got my A, B, C. Right, so um, A is for my carbons. It's on the right side, but I need three of them, so I'm going to put 3A. And then my B is for my hydrogen. It's on the right side. But I need two of them, so I'm going to put in two Bs. And then C is for my propyne over here. It's on the wrong side, but it's the right number of them, so I'm just going to say minus C. So that is going to be 3 times minus 394 plus 2 times minus 286 flipped over my C. So it's just become a plus or minus minus if you're... If you wanted to keep it that way, uh, 1939, add all that up, keeping everything in the calculator as you're going, probably. Um, would highly recommend. Um, 185 kilojoules per mole. Okay. If we wanted to do this in um, a full HES method, okay, so you start with have I got my target equation? Yes. Have I got my data equations? Yes. Okay, so then you're going to fix, you're going to flip. You're going to cancel and you're going to add. Okay, now this always gets a bit messier, but I'm absolutely for it as a method 
especially if you're not absolutely happy with how it's kind of come round. Okay, so first one, um, we are going to fix and flip the first equation. So um, I need three carbons here. So three, I don't need to flip it, um, but three times minus 394. I hadn't written that down somewhere, so just a second. Okay, so this becomes minus 1182. Okay, second equation, um, fixing, it needs to go to two. So that's two, two, and two, and two times that, so two times uh, 286. So that's minus 572 here, okay? And the last equation is fine, but it needs to be flipped over, okay? Um, so it becomes, oh, sorry, this is, I'm gonna, actually, let me just rub out that so I've got space. Um, so change this to 3CO2 plus 2H2O goes to C3H4 plus 4H2O and sorry not h2 just o2 um and change that to a plus okay that becomes plus 1939 uh get rid of that okay right then we we merge them cancelling out things that no longer need to be there um so let's see what we've got so i have three oxygens on this side four oxygens on this side actually on the left i've got four on the right though so i can get rid of all of these oxygens Okay, I have three carbon dioxides coming out on the right, but I've also got them going in here. So let's get rid of those. And I've got two waters coming out and I've got two waters going in. Get rid of them. Do I now have my target equation? Three carbons plus two H2 gives me C3H4. Yes, I do. I am super happy with what I've done. And I just add these up and I get exactly the same answer as I had. Oh, kilojoules uh, per mole. Okay, whichever way you like, it's all good. Right, propane has been suggested as possible rocket fuel. The enthalpy of propane is one minus one nine three nine kilojoules per mole. Calculate the energy released in kilojoules when one kilogram of propane is burned completely. Okay, right. Uh, it's only worth one mark because you're just basically proportioning up. So it's not it's not giving you a, not giving you a lot of marks for that one. Okay, so what we've got is that one mole, forty grams, would give us uh, one nine three nine. Okay, and we're looking for a kilogram. So one thousand divided by forty times by one nine three nine gives us four eight four seven five kilojoules. One mark. You can see why it's one mark. Okay. The mass of air required to burn one gram of a fuel can be calculated using a relationship. So you've got mass of air in grams equals 4.3 times the mass of oxygen in grams needed for complete combustion of one gram of fuel. Okay. Calculate the mass of air in grams required to burn one gram of propane. Okay. Right. So you're given the equation, which is um, which you're going to need. Okay. Uh, so what we know is that C3H4 to oxygen is a one to four. So that means for every one mole of this, which you were told up the top here, one mole weighs 40 grams, we actually need four moles of oxygen. So four times 32. So that is 128. It's the mass of oxygen we need. So one gram one divided by 40 times by 128 means that I, for every one gram of propane, I need 32 grams of oxygen, okay? Not finished, okay? Because this was that was just calculating that bit there. Okay, now I just plug that in though, so it's reasonably straightforward. In fact, let me just get rid of that so it doesn't look like I had a final answer. Okay, go back to my normal color. Um, so our mass in grams is 4.3 times, uh, oh, sorry, missed a decimal point, uh, 3.2, uh, which is 13.76. That's your answer. Yeah, sorry about that. 32 did look a bit big, considering dividing by 40. Um, okay. 
Part three, table shows the mass of air required to burn one gram of different fuels. Suggests why methanol and ethanol compared to the other fuels require less air to burn one gram. Okay, so what is the difference between these is the all. <laughs> and the all means that they already contain some oxygen. That's it. Need less from there. Um, that's the question done.